Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, and uh, it's with pleasure I rise today uh, and uh, support uh, Bill C-442. Uh, on behalf of the Liberal Caucus, uh, Mr. Speaker, I would indicate that we do uh, support the bill and want to see the bill ultimately pass uh, and uh, go through our committee process and obviously third reading. And uh, I was encouraged to, to hear from the uh, leader of the Green Party that uh, she is open to having uh, some possible amendments uh, that would not uh, change the intent of the bill, but uh, quite possibly make it a little bit more practical in terms of its uh, implementation. The Lyme disease is, in fact, a very serious issue, as it's been uh, talked about at, uh, at length in the, la in the last 45 minutes. I thought maybe, Mr. Speaker, I would uh, emphasize uh, a different, uh, from a different perspective, more of a, of a personal way, uh, in terms of just the, what I believe is likely the most important issue facing this particular uh, disease, and that is the whole sense of public awareness. There's different regions in Canada, and some more affected uh, by Lyme disease than others. Um, you know, in, in Manitoba, uh, it is a, a very serious uh, disease, and uh, many people are aware that uh, Manitoba, we have this beautiful, wonderful summers, and uh, many of uh, uh, my uh, friends uh, have cottages uh, out in rural Manitoba. There's all sorts of camps that take place, youth camps that uh, take place. Some regions of, of the province of Manitoba, in particular in the southeast, uh, there's a, a higher a risk factor of, of Lyme disease. Um, and we need to ensure that there's a higher sense of public awareness. Uh, over the years, I have found, over the last maybe three, four years, there seems to be more of a, uh, a higher sense of a public awareness. Uh, but even today, I don't believe there's enough done in terms of promotional, educational material and the government taking a proactive approach at ensuring that there's a high sense of education on this particular uh, disease. Uh, that's one of the aspects of the bill that uh, I do uh, support in its entirety, uh, uh, Mr. Speaker, is the fact that we need to, to recognize that and incorporate it, and I'm glad that it's actually in the legislation itself. Um, I have, uh, for example, gone out to uh, Pelican Lake, which is in the southeast uh, in uh, Manitoba, gone through all the different uh, trails. Uh, I've spent uh, many a days uh, with, in particular, uh, my, my daughter going through, and after you know, a half day of going through the trails, you get back uh, to, the, uh, to the cabin and you, you might have a dozen or so ticks uh, on you. And that is even, uh, Mr. Speaker, if you take caution and you have the long clothes on and you have them tucked into, you, into your stocks, you put on some form of repellent, somehow, they have this ability, the ticks, uh, to, to cling on to you, and it does not take uh, much. Um, and, you know, you do get that uh, look over to make sure that you're doing what you can to, to t get rid of the ticks if you see the ticks that, that are on you. But what amazes me is that when I've had the opportunity to talk uh, to, to people in regards to Lyme disease, to the degree in which they don't know what Lyme disease is. They know what a wood tick is, um, and they often have wood ticks on their body, uh, Mr. Speaker, but they don't know what Lyme disease uh, is. And I find that that to be actually quite tragic. And this is individuals that I would have thought that would have uh, known, uh, Mr. Speaker. Some of the more regular cottage goers. Um, you know, even when you go to, to camps, and in particular, you know, I, I made reference to, to youth camps. We have uh, young people that participate in camps uh, throughout uh, Canada. And I made comments in regards to southeastern uh, Manitoba. Well, you know, we've, we've had cases identified in, in most uh, provinces of, of Lyme disease, uh, uh, Mr. Speaker. And every year we will have literally tens of thousands of uh, children uh, participating in, in uh, outdoor activities, in summer camps, and so forth. As the leader of the Green Party pointed out, we, we want to encourage uh, our young people and all, uh, all people to uh, appreciate and enjoy uh, outdoors. But it's very important that we recognize um, the advantages of being proactive in terms of 
uh, material on this particular uh, disease. Because of the debil uh, uh, debilitating uh, impact of someone uh, acquiring uh, Lyme disease, uh, Mr. Speaker, you know, most would say that you know, it takes two or three days before you, you see the, the symptoms. And uh, quite often that is, in fact, the case. Uh, but often, Mr. Speaker, it will take a week or so. It's even been uh, suggested and recorded where we have seen it appear months, if not a couple of years later after an original infection uh, from, from a tick. Um, the symptoms uh, range from uh, fatigue, uh, fever, um, um, headaches, you know, the idea of a tick bite uh, or a tick infestation will often uh, leave kind of a, a, a bullseye look of a rash uh, on, on the skin. These are the type of things that uh, one needs to, to be aware of and, and to look for. I am um, suggesting, uh, Mr. Speaker, that one of the first priorities in terms of this whole consultation process, from my perspective, is to come up with a program that's all inclusive, that ensures that there is a very strong educational component and promotional uh, component uh, to fighting this disease. And that is something in which uh, I believe is absolutely critical. When we talk about the establishment of the, the role of the federal government to work with uh, the provinces and territories, and we need to expand that, I understand. We talk about medical professions, but there are other uh, stakeholders that are out there. In particular, Mr. Speaker, I would suggest to you things such as our, our school boards um, and other uh, vested uh, groups, uh, nonprofit groups, uh, groups that promote outdoors, uh, Mr. Speaker. You know, we have all sorts of outdoors groups from, uh, as pointed out, cottages to ATV to um, uh, jogging clubs, you name it, that they're, that they're there, that we need to heighten the sense of, of awareness of this particular uh, disease. And uh, this is something that I think is, is critical. So when we talk about uh, mandating the, the federal government to, to start looking uh, at uh, bringing the stakeholders uh, together, I would like to think that we will take a very holistic approach um, at who it is that has something to offer in terms of the development of this uh, overall uh, strategy, uh, Mr. Speaker. I recognize that the gov federal government in particular has a, a strong role to play in terms of uh, best practices. Um, and that is something in which we do need to, to take uh, seriously. And that's where we can uh, complement uh, the different provincial and territorial uh, uh, jurisdictions. Um, I do believe that we need to make sure that the resources are there, uh, Mr. Speaker. At the, at the end of the day, if we can be more proactive at the front end, uh, we will improve, uh, I believe, dramatically uh, the increased spread of this, uh, uh, of this uh, disease, uh, Mr. Speaker, because what we have realized is that the number of reports is on the rise, that uh, the Lyme disease is something that is, is growing. So in looking at uh, Bill uh, C-442, and it in essence wants us to convene a conference with the provincial and territorial health ministers and different stakeholders. It wants to, the establishment of a national uh, medical surveillance program to use uh, data collected by the public uh, health agency. I've made reference in terms of the, uh, the educational component. It wants to develop and have a report of the strategy to be tabled here in Parliament and that the strategy must be reviewed uh, for its effectiveness after five years. I believe it is a bill that is, is worth uh, supporting. We within the Liberal caucus do support it in anticipation, Mr. Speaker, that it's only a question of time before it ultimately passes. Thank you for the opportunity to say a few words.